In this video, we're going to talk about how we can work with the Linux environment and our C programs. If you'll recall, Linux has environment variables that allow you to store information and retrieve that information. So for example, if I take a look at the user variable, I'll see my username. The home variable will tell me my home directory. The shell variable will tell me what shell I'm currently using. So there's a lot of these out there that are used for various reasons and applications can actually use these. These can all be set in your initialization files. Now that's beyond the scope of what we wanna talk about now. In this video, we're gonna focus on what we can do from our C programs to work with these environment variables. So the environment variables are all strings. So let's create a string variable to hold the value of a variable. And I'll call this home. And we'll say that that's equal to whatever the home variable holds. And then I'll print out what that is equal to. And so let's compile. And so there you can see the result. And it's the same that I got above. Now I can change this value using the set env function. And so the first parameter is the variable I want to change. And then the second is the value I want it to be changed to. So now let's do this where we have the original and then we have the new home. Now when I compile, I'm going to get an error and it's because the implicit declaration of function set env. So what I need to do is take away the pedantic option and I also need to not specify the C11 standard. And the reason is that the set env function is not part of the official standard. And so when I tell GCC stick to the standard explicitly, then it's going to not compile or give me warnings because it's not part of that standard. So here I'm relaxing my adherence to the C standard so that I'm able to compile and run this program. So you'll notice here I have too few arguments. And the reason is, is that there is one additional argument for set env, and that is to indicate whether or not I want to overwrite what's already there. So I do, and so I'm going to say one. So now let's compile and we'll run. And you can see that the new home is unchanged because I forgot to get that value. Ah, so there we go. And you can see that we have the new home. Now, did this change my actual Linux environment? Notice if I say echo home, the C program runs in its own environment. And so I can update that and modify it. But then once it exits, those changes are lost. So that's nice because of course I wouldn't necessarily want a C program, for example, changing the shell environment, the username, my home folder, and that sort of thing. What if we want to add an environment variable? Well, to do that, actually, let's uh, put some print statements here describing what we're doing. So to add a new environment variable, I can use the put env function. And there I'm going to give it the string representation of an assignment. So I'm going to just call this put env123. And I'm going to create another one that I'm going to call set env test. And I'm going to update that one later. But for now, let me get put env, and then I'll print it. And then I'm going to do the same thing, but with set env test. And I'm using, reusing that same variable, which shouldn't be a problem. So let's compile and run. And notice I have those new environment variables that I'm able to get. After I put them in the environment, I can get them and they come across as I would expect. And again, if I say echo put env now, and let me do this correctly. And you can see there's nothing there because again, once the program exits, I lose that environment that the program runs under. Now, one final thing. So to update one of those newly added variables, I can say set env, set env test, and I'll give it a new value. And I do want to overwrite it. And so now, and let me do it before and after here, actually. So I get it, I print before, I set it, and now I'll do after. I'll compile and run. And you can see before it was 42, that's the value we set originally, and then after we see success. So hopefully you can see here that we can go through and decide if there's anything from the environment we want to use. And again, this allows us to have shortcuts for things like the computer name we're running on or something like that, where we can write programs that can react to what those values are, 
but the values don't have to be part of the programs. We can have them set up in, in the environment. And you don't want to abuse this. Don't treat these as global variables. I mean, essentially that's what they are, but of course, just like with global variables, you want to be very judicious in where you use those. But there are places, again, like where you have code that needs to be aware of the system name of the computer it's running on or something like that. Using environment variables are very helpful in that sort of case so that you're not writing individual code for multiple different workstations.